we're now recording this VOD as well. This is 4GG's Terran versus Terran shit on your face with Mass Hellion build. Um, and I'm also hoping that this is actually the same build because I didn't watch this series. I was merely told that the same thing happened in this series that 4GG did to MMA, which, which is, you know, what we expect. Um, where did I get the DreamHack replays? I'm friends with the DreamHack admins and people that work for DreamHack. Did you think... Do you really think, especially when it comes to replays, there are things I can't get my dirty Terran paws on? So... Okay, factory is gonna be... Three minutes sharp. Three minute factory, that's when the barracks is done. So, here's the part where things get interesting, right? This is the part where I, Nathaniel Lawrence Fabricant, 21 year old white American male, living in California, uh, usually get confused. I was really confused by Terrence doing this. See this Reaper, man? This shit has been driving me insane the last couple of weeks. It's like, Nathan, why does this Reaper bother you? Okay, so look and see, 4GG's at 18 supply. It's important that we note some of these things. We're gonna say, he builds one Marine, Reaper. This is uncommon, this isn't normal, this isn't something that I ever thought would become part of Terran versus Terran, but for whatever reason, literally everybody is starting to do this. I'm starting to see this in a very high number of gas first builds. And then we're gonna say, so we're gonna say, uh, start second gas. This is a part of that, let's say 18 supply. So this is a part of it, right? Because you obviously, when you go gas first, typically speaking, and I'll talk to you guys through this, typically speaking, when you do a gas first build, actually I wanna make sure that the game sound does not interfere with my voice. So let's just turn this bad boy down a little bit more. But typically speaking, when you do gas first, you go factory at 100 gas, starport at 100 gas. Now, if we look, Forge only has 50 gas and his factory is about to finish, but you take this gas as soon as you start your Reaper so that you can help recover a little bit more, right? It's gonna get, it just gives him that extra little bit of gas faster, but this also sets him up for the most important part, which is obviously his follow-up. So there's that Reaper. The starport is starting now at about 415, so we'll say 415 starport. And of course, um, Hellion from Factory, Marines after Reaper, right? Feel free to screenshot this, those of you who don't sub to me, those of you who do sub to me, I will send this out, um, I'll send out these notes after today's broadcast. So, he's just gonna build Marines out of the barracks. Oh, oh, what's this? He only builds one Marine. Well, look at me not paying attention. Tech Lab after Reaper. Hmm. Hmm. My jimmies are rustled in a good way. So the funny thing is, oftentimes when you do what 4GG's doing this game, because someone like Pult opens up with a Reaper, he's very greedy. You'll note Pult has nothing except his Reaper. Uh, now, of course, if 4GG realizes this, if he kills this SCV, he can actually just deny. But 4G loses his Reaper, so not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, what's going on over here? Oh, oh, hello there. Hello there. So, 4GGs is gonna put that starport right on that tech lab. He's gonna get Cloak, he's gonna get a Banshee. Now, the reason why 4GG is doing this, by the way, uh, he's scouted enough. He saw that Pult went the Reaper, and Pult is not the kind of guy to do the same build as 4GG in this case. Pult is a Reaper expander, so 4GG knows that, uh, Going for Banshee isn't going to be too big of a risk because if you go for a Banshee like this, off of an opening like this, you can be vulnerable to a Cloak Banshee build of your opponent, but 4GG is a good player. So what happens now? We're going to have in this game, in this game, swap Starport to Tech Lab, Banshee plus Cloak, Barracks builds Reactor. Now what units does 4GG have on the map? I have two Hellions. He actually runs these by because he's a crazy son of a bitch that loves to throw Hellions away. So we're gonna say he has two Hellions, a Marine, and in a best, <laughs> this guy is just like, fuck that bunker. But in best case scenario, you have the Reaper as well, which also complicates the life of our Terran. Uh, but Pole is not a bad player at this game. So he has units. On ladder, your opponent may not have units. Now let's look back at what's happening over here because it's this build that fascinates me, the way that, the way that a couple guys are doing this. Um, 
There's a few ways to follow this up. Forge G likes to follow it up with mass hellions uh, and use that to literally hold off everything. But there's the Banshee. So Forge G's gonna go into a second Banshee because he doesn't know, he knows that he's not, uh, because the units he ran in, he's not expecting Cloak Banshee, right? This doesn't say Cloak Banshee at all. Pult's all like, let's get defensive because I'm Pult. This is all I do is play defense, 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 and try to get it macro. Banshee comes in, it's like, blah, 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 blah. wait, what's going on over here? Second factory starts up as a reactor starts on the barracks. So we're gonna look around seven minutes. All right, so build Hellions after reactor. Should be obvious enough, so about 7.15. We're gonna start a second factory plus reactor on barracks. This barracks isn't building any of our anti-air uh, in a normal game. It's very easy for you to also be defensive against any type of Banshee play from your opponent by simply building a Raven instead of the Cloak Banshee and Cloak. You'll re you'll recognize, be like, whoa, Nathan, it's the same gas cost. That's right, Jimmy. That also means you can start building Hellions earlier because you invest less minerals into the Banshee play. So, moving forward, I just pressed P <laughs> in my notepad. So, what does this do? Well, that Banshees are done, right? So for this stage of the game, 4 is just gonna be really fucking annoying. Why? His Banshees are annoying. He has another Banshee on the map too. But what does this do? Now, I guess he builds this Viking maybe a little bit early. You wanna swap this Starport off so that this factory can go here and allow you to get Blue Flame. Uh, the Blue Flame that 4 goes for is actually more important than uh, going for fast tanks because he just uses his stupid number of Hellions to overwhelm everything. For example, Watch as 4GG uses a stupid number of Hellions to overwhelm this Marine push. Wow, he just overwhelmed that stupid number of Marines with his stupid number of Hellions. I think I mixed that one up, but you get the point. So he defends, defends. He's like, yeah, yeah, back off, back off. Only loving the crew. Factory goes on here and blue flame, blue flame. See, he's not building a tank. He's not building a tank. 4G's not building a tank. Where is the, where is it? Oh, blue flame. You have 400 gas. I guess he really wants to build Hellions. It's important to keep unit production up, obviously. Um, Pult hasn't killed a ton of workers. In fact, 4GG's Banshee opener kind of put him in an okay spot for this game. But it's not like Pult's out of it, right? The supply looks okay. Worker count is actually favoring Pult because he expanded faster. And his saturation is looking much better than 4GG. He's got a couple of extra SCVs up here, of course, missing out on some building depots. Blue flame. Ah, blue flame. Of course, as soon as I pause it for 15 seconds, blue flame would start after. But look at this. 4 is building an absurd number of Hellions. Now, I'm actually really interested to see when the first push comes out of him because you also use this reactor at Starport. Now, the key difference between 4 gg I'm sorry I'm pausing so much, but it's important that you guys understand this because it's going to make you suck less, just like it'll make me suck less, right? Because none of us are Korean GM top 16s. So we all suck. But he keeps these Banshees alive, which is adorable. But you build Vikings when you want to play Hellions because this allows your fast Hellions to catch any drops. This allows your Vikings to deny any drops, right? If you want to stop a drop, you need something that shoots units in the air. I'm John Madden. Now, players like Innovation, Flash, they like to get Medivacs once they have three or five Vikings. This allows them to use a quicker armory that might be starting around now to go for a lot of Hellbat drop play and use Hellbat drops to defend instead of relying on Viking Hellions. Um, you know, in the old days, people would say Gumiho is that guy that just defends with everything with Viking Hellion. But look at this. 4 is going to come up. And you might notice something. He has a shit ton of, of Hellions. So Pult's defensive setup isn't bad, right? You got the bunker, two tanks, Marauders, Hellions. Uh, Marauders, Marines, it's great. No extra gases yet for 4 GG because with two factories, even if he was building tanks, he can very easily afford uh, to build other shit. Look at this, he lands his Vikings. He's just a crazy motherfucker. He's like, I've got five Vikings. I'm gonna attack into two tanks. Apparently, 4GG wins this series, so I'm really interested to see how this works. How exactly does this work? Oh, he just runs in with a shit ton of Hellions and Vikings. And with the two Banshees. And he kills pretty much everything, but it's like, okay, Marines should be able to defend this, right? Apparently not, because guess who's rallying down Hellions across the map? 4 as we can see here, Hellions are pretty good units because he actually crushes the army that Pull has. But you're like, okay, well, this isn't game winning by any means. Now he's starting to kill SCVs. And oh my god, three Hellions crossing the map at a time. You know, not all of us will be able to do this in our ladder games. And I'm sure that I won't have as much success 
In fact, I'm completely fucking blown away that he was able to kill, um, I don't know. He's actually able to kill so much, but, marauders, yeah, but like, yeah, he's literally killing him with Viking Hellion. I'm not gonna lie, I thought there was gonna be more to this game. Okay, now he starts third command center. Doesn't give any fucks. Thing is, Viking Hellion can actually kill anything early enough if you have enough Vikings and Hellions. So, the most important part of this is not that he kills Pult, it's that, imagine how badly that went for Pult trying to defend, but if you tried to attack into 4GG when his blue flame's done, you fucked, right? Like, he couldn't defend it when his tanks were sieged up and he had a bunker. Imagine if your tanks are in siege and you have no bunker. You you just die. So, 4GG just straight up kills him. I'm really surprised that he killed him this quickly. This reminds me of the series he played versus MMA, which is the reason why we're going over this VOD. Um, so, yeah, that's not really what I expected to happen. But it happened. All right. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting. We're gonna go into game two. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he did it both games against Pult, so that's that's why we're gonna look at both games. Um, but we're gonna see if there's any differences, because this map is obviously better for aggressive play, which means I'm hoping that we're gonna see what we want to see. So let's go to save. Oh no, you guys! You guys just saw that I have a business folder. Oh, she. Let me put this into my getting better, getting better at StarCraft folder, getting better at StarCraft folder. Ah, yes. Yes. I actually use, I use quite a few 4G, so let's say 4GG Hellions, uh, we'll say uh, Season 3 WCS, because that's around the WCS season this is being used. This allows you guys to keep track of dates, um, so you guys can know how old the builds are. But hopefully you guys like this sort of thing, because this is also going to be put up on my YouTube channel. So I'll try not to waste too much time, because I understand that you've probably already clicked out of this YouTube video during this sentence three times, and then tab back in to see if I was talking about anything useful again. Can we see the actual fight again? Because what the actual fuck? We're going to go over that uh, in a bit. You know, the point is of this build isn't to try to win games easily. It's to have a really good uh, core setup. So that was that. Let's make a new one. Let's make a new one. So we're going to say... 4GG versus Pult Game 2. Dreamhack Stockholm Hellions. So we're gonna I'm just gonna get the obvious stuff out of the way. Alright. So was it the lack of a ramp in the natural that made those Hellions so effective? Yes, yes. That's why I'm not talking about that engagement, because Foxtrot is a map that's often vetoed. But what I really want to see is how it plays out on a different map. If I had the replays of 4GG versus MMA, I would dissect those as well, but I don't really have... I don't know. Um, I don't really have too many other replays. The problem is, replays don't work after the last patch, so there's very, very few on the market right now. I actually sold my kidney and maybe some illegal substances to, to get my hands on just these two replays because they're, they're that, you know, they're, they're that hard to get right now. Um, or GG. So yeah, like I said, it's going to be the very obvious 12 racks, uh, 12, 12 gas, 13 racks. Forgetting how I actually got the replays, I was at the event, so it was easy. Um, and I worked for them. But 4 GG. Yeah, it's nothing really crazy, right? I like this build order a lot. Uh, it's going to be, yeah, so factory, barracks. I don't even know if I need to write this down again. I'm going to see if I can find any differences between this one and the other one. I think that's the best way to do it. I think that's the best way. Yeah, so the Reaper, second guess. Anything else? Hmm. Yeah, Hellion. Yeah, nothing really crazy here. Nothing crazy at all. It's the exact same build so far. But let's see what he scouts, right? Because this Reaper is going to go into cold space. He sees something completely different. Completely different. It's a one base build from Pult. It's going to be a very fast starport. Important things to note. Uh, he don't think he saw the second gas. But what does matter is that he knows there's no tech lab pre-built. So it's probably not going to be a very fast... Um, yeah, he's going to go Banshee again because it's not a fast Banshee from Pult. Because he only saw the one gas... Actually, he doesn't even know how many gases were taken. 
But you typically have a, a tech lab already prepared, so he knows that there's no tech lab, which is why he's comfortable with going Banshee instead of building a Raven. If he's got a tech lab, you can just build a Raven and then a Viking, and then I think you're just ahead. Uh, but the Banshee is also good defensively against things like this Hellion that Pult sends. I just love that he does this the same way. Like, he did the same exact thing versus MMA in, like, both the games that they played. He just built a shit ton of Hellions. And guess what, guys? There's the reactor. Okay, so like I said, he only built a single Marine. So, so brave. Pult's like, all right, I've got Marines and a mind drop. Hey, guys. Did you guys remember what I said about a lot of Hellions? No, I can't distribute these replays. Sorry. Remember what I said about a lot of Hellions? A lot of Hellions. Little Mine kills NSCV. And these Marines all die for free. Hellions are gonna chase all day. And they're gonna shoot a meta back away. That's right. Get out. There's nothing you can do to this. Alright, no more freestyling. Medivac's still gonna skirt around. The 4GG's like, what? This Reaper? Oh, yeah, that's the Banshee. How about that, huh? So that hasn't done any damage yet. I think there's another Banshee coming out. Yeah, 4 has got double Banshee in both of these. Oh! I like how the Banshee's like pushing those Marines away, because there's only three of them. He wants to keep the Hellions on the map. So what does 4 gg know doing this? He's like, well, you don't have a lot of units, obviously. So these Hellions... Mmm, they want to get some work done. Thankfully, Pult is smart enough to block his ramp off on this map because he knows Forge he likes to build. As I That's actually just adorable. That's actually... This is actually just adorable. Okay. That was fun to watch. That was fun to watch. Snipes just that SCV. Trades a Marine to delay this command center. I like it. Considering this SCV... Yeah, it's like a solid 20 second delay. He couldn't break his base because Pult is a tank now on the other side of those depots. But just everything in this build is so fluid. There's only one thing missing. Yeah, 4 gg's follow-up has been slowed down a little bit. Uh, is the most important to note here. He's still going to start the second factory and get his reactor. Uh, we saw that was that actually, you know what? Instead of instead of writing new notes, I would prefer to just compare. I would prefer to just compare to the last one. Let's just compare to the last one. So what's different this time? 7.15 was when he got the second factory and the reactor. This game, it's 836. It's only because there's just a slightly more aggressive opening that have made things uh, a little bit complicated. Are we are we talking about grills in chat? This is... Mm. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad this has been a productive learning session for those of you watching. Hopefully the people watching in YouTube aren't also talking about grills. Otherwise, that would be a really weird coincidence. And you probably think I'm psychic. Banshee's going to move in for 4 gg So, I'm trying to see... If there's any real changes in this build, there's nothing. There's nothing, it's just a little bit delayed, but Pult's also delayed, right? So let's let's speed things up just a little bit. Forgy's gonna do that thing where his Banshee's really annoying. He actually loses one this game. In fact, he's lost two Banshees. He goes up to a third. And I guess, if you, if that, you know, uh, if that's what you want. Still being really annoying. Trying to bait out scans while also dodging, I guess. It's never a bad idea. There's still a lot of Hellions, though. There's no way he attacks this. No, I, I refuse to believe it. His blue flame is way too far away from being complete. No, no, 4GG. You can't just send Hellions in every will like willy-nilly. You can't. It doesn't work like that. Oh, the repair is very real, though. Correct. And Viking got on. Now, is there anything else worth mentioning? We have blue flame, only building Hellions, no tanks. He did this versus MMA as well. I was like, man... He, versus MMA, he literally just built Hellions. He actually didn't produce a single siege tank until he'd already won the game, probably for no reason at all. So, I'm really, uh, I'm really blown away that he makes this work. Because you just have so many Hellions, you can actually hold off any standard ladder bullshit strategy. So yeah, third command center. We're seeing a bit more evolution to this build, right? Because this game goes on much longer than the first game did. So third command center for 4GG, Armory and double gas so we're gonna say you know addendum third plus armory plus three slash four gas it's important to note this because uh 4gg producing purely hellions doesn't have any gas expenditure except off of this starport right 4gg is not building anything that requires gas except a handful of vikings and those early banshees because of this 
taking these gas as soon as he secures his natural is not the most important thing. What's more important is that the extra minerals he saves by not mining this gas allows him to get his third command center while producing a shit ton of Hellions, which normally you would not be able to afford. So that plays into the armory timing, and since he still only has one factory with a tech lab, uh, he doesn't, you know, he's actually floating gas. He's not concerned with uh, not having money or gas to build tanks. Let's keep going forward here. Forgy Dude does this thing where he's like really aggressive out of the map and he pays off. Why do you know? It's like, hey, killed a, killed a Viking. Alien's out on the map. Whoop. Blue Flame is done. Just being aggressive in general. Plus one attack is ready. Okay, both players are getting thirds. Let's see if anything else happens. 4GG goes right up to four factories. Okay, okay, he goes right up to five. I was going to say four factories are things that get weird, but five. So he just sets himself up with a very standard mech up, and he's like, wow. Despite the fact that we knew he was going to go with mech all along, he starts his first tank at like 12 minutes, and he has like 20 Hellions. Yeah, he's got close to 20 Hellions. Lots of Hellions. That's just the way 4GG rolls. Um, yeah, building some depots. And nothing really surprising or impressive here. What's important to note is that 4GG actually goes back into Banshees because he's not feeling... Why isn't he feeling worried about air? Hmm. I guess he just assumes that Polt's going to build medevacs. And Polt is building medevacs. He's not produced any additional Vikings to cover ground, so... Okay. Keeping... Four Vikings seems to be what he wants. I'm really surprised he went back into Banshees so soon. Maybe it was just because he wanted this reactor on that. But yeah, this isn't going to do much of anything here. Just a little bit of a delay. As far as he takes the third. Let's see. What else? What else? I don't want to completely cast this game. That's not my goal. Um, anything else with his build? Mm, plus one. Lots of Banshees. A surprising amount of Banshees. For a mechian player with lots of Hellions, you generally don't see this many Banshees. So when does he move out next? He still has a he has like still so many Hellions that fighting versus a Marine heavy army is easy. But this is very Marine low. It's actually Guys, I think we hit the nail on the head. I think we just discovered why Forge is building Banshees for the last few minutes. Because he's got so many fucking Hellions, you don't want to build Marines versus him. Boom. In fact, he plays no Hellbats at all. So you build a lot of Marauders, you build a lot of tanks, and then, and then these Banshees actually just wreck your face. Aside from the fact that he'll still attack you with Mass Hellion, but now look, k pulls away to the side, and there's so few Marines that even head-to-head -head, they can't kill the Banshees, because they have that plus one. They actually just shit on this army. Wow, and then, oh my god, because he has Vikings already, the Medivacs get pushed away, and then he just kills them now, huh? Pretty much just kills them. The third base is gonna get cleaned out. There's a counter drop, but you're building Hellions, which are fast, so you're not really worried about that. What an interesting game from 4 GT. Okay, so he's outside the natural and just starts to kill everything. Huh. Well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. GG. Oh, there you have it. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm mostly interested in the opener, which is why I'm not going to have any notes on the mid late game stage, but there you go. Now you guys have an opener that will actually allow you to win a TVT every once in a while. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to do that in my latter games, I think. Getting out that many Hellions really seems like a good way to, um... A really good way to get early map control, too. Like, um... Thing is... If you throw any uh, any type of aggressive push, um, if you throw any type of aggressive push, I don't know who this guy is. Hi, some random guy invited me to a party. Anyway, my point is, um, yeah, use that build to get early aggressive.